<clears throat> so I want to talk about prostate cancer today. Now, prostate cancer is a big thing in the Western world. I don't know about the other parts of the world, but with men especially. Now, in my studies, I will, I'm will i just going to say it straight out. Prostate cancer has everything to do with a man, his masculinity, and his relationship with work. Because you notice, especially in the past generations, that a man would identify himself with work. You know, how's work today? Oh, it was good, it was bad, it sucked. Whatever it was, it was okay. Work is such an important thing for a man. So what, once a man starts getting into his, you know, mid fifties, late fifties, sixties, then what happens is as younger people start coming in, maybe their body starts to break down, they can't do as much work as they used to. For whatever reason, they're not able to have that working aspect of their identity. Yeah, because before they may have been a builder, they may have, they may have been a boilermaker, a fisherman, or whatever it was, they were. But now, when that a part of their identity is stripped away, the working part of their identity, then they have what we, that, that I believe that, that that is what contributes to prostate cancer. So prostate has everything to do with the, the function of being a male, and that the shame, the guilt, the anger, about not being able to have that working aspect of your identity. So if, if your whole life if you've been known as, yeah, that's John, he's a really great worker, or Steve, oh, he's a really good worker, you know, how was work? You go down to the pub, you talk about work, you know, you work, work, work. If you have problems at home, you stay at work, you work more. Work is a place of certainty, it's a place of community connection with other people. But once that is taken away from you, maybe when you're not able to work anymore, and, and you can't have that conversation, you know, what you, you know, how's work, you know, no, I'm not, I'm retired, or I don't work anymore, then there, that becomes a sense of shame, uh, becomes a sense of guilt, um, resentment, anger, a lot of survival emotions, which, like I said in previous videos, we have two, two defense mechanisms in our body, the immune system, which, you know, obviously has the white blood cells, runs around killing, uh, destroying viruses, bacteria, uh, parasites that are not good for the body. And we have the fight, flight, freeze, uh, you know, survival mechanism in our body. Both systems cannot work concurrently. So the immune system is working optimally or the fight, flight, freeze system is working optimally. So, for example, if you've got the flu and say maybe you're in bed being uh, fixing the flu, you're, you're fighting the flu and you're so exhausted you can't move, then your immune system is acting. But what happens is, is if uh, maybe a, a lion appears outside, if you're in Africa, a lion appears out, outside your room or you know, somehow gets in the house, your immune system will shut down. All the blood will rush from your central nervous system into your arms and legs ready to fight this lion or run from this lion. So the fight, flight, freeze response has precedence over the immune system. Yeah, you're getting it? The immune system will shut down in order for the fight, flight, freeze system to save your life by running from the lion or fighting the lion. And and obviously, when you cannot turn the immune system on fully unless you fully turn off that system. So this is what happens with cancer is when a person's engaged in so many feelings of guilt, shame, anger, sadness about their, their identity as, as a worker, as a male, as a man, because men are the warriors, men are the conquerors, men are the, men are the people who like to work. When that is taken away, then the immune system, which normally deals with cancer cells, because we're born with cancer cells, we have cancer cells in our body, you know, to varying degrees over the entire course of our life, but our immune system is generally strong enough to defeat those and to, to clear those cancer cells out. That's what our immune system does. What happens is our fight, flight, freeze response comes on. Our unconscious mind doesn't know the difference between something that's vividly real and something that's imagined. Sorry, real and vividly imagined. And it shuts down our immune system. And we're in fight, flight, freeze response. And when a person, say, I mean, this is, this is where they get to their mid 50s, uh, late 50s, or whatever the age it is, is that shame, the guilt, the anger, the sadness, the grief, not having that working part of your identity. So, what is the key? Okay, the key is you work with someone like me and you start really working through and clearing these survival emotions because they will have built up over a lifetime. Uh, obviously, I do encourage you to do your chemotherapy and all that other kind of, you know, allopathic remedies for your cancer and change your diet. Do you get your radiation done, whatever? For, and then I encourage you to get involved with someone like me. And, and it's really about clearing those survival emotions. Uh, and I have strategies with which to clear those and to work through those. And and also it's about um, developing a new identity around your new role as a you know mature member of society. You have so much to contribute. You have so much to give back with your working skill. You can be a mentor. You can train apprentices. You can go into education. You don't necessarily need to be working with tools on the ground with your hands. You can find other ways to, you know, express your manhood, express your man masculinity, 
in a in a fulfilling way and in a, in a, you know contribute and to the society at large so it's really just clinging on to an old this is just clinging on to an old version of yourself or an old paradigm that you used to be a part of and having grief and sadness and shame and anger that you're no longer able to hold on to that identity so it's about moving forward and creating that new identity who you who you now are because you're going to be a different person so that will contribute to the healing of prostate cancer so if you're getting chemotherapy and you're doing all the right things but you're still not able to heal this properly then it comes into you know working with someone like me working through those survival emotions uh, neutralizing them getting yourself back to a place where this system the fight flight free system shuts down and your immune system comes back online and it is able to contribute from the inside out towards the healing of your cancer. So you have the chemotherapy, you know, working in an outside in fashion, and you can have your immune system working on an inside out fashion to help you heal. Okay, this is Roger Roger. Thanks for so much for watching me. Please, because I get these 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 texts and messages through Facebook, you know, you know, forward this to someone about prostate cancer awareness. Here's the answer to fucking prostate cancer awareness, okay? Send this to your mates, um, get them to read it, get to get them to understand it. If they're close minded and don't understand it, well fuck them that you know it's, it's never going to work for him, but this does work. I do understand it. You know, my, this is my uncle had prostate cancer. Now he's he's doing well. It's 12 months, 12 months since he uh, pretty much had 72 hours to live, and, and I took him through this process of clearing the fight, flight, freeze emotions over the course of a couple of days, and now he's well. Have an awesome day.